All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, this is going to be episode three, and we're starting uh, to prepare the cape and getting ready to mount this deer. We're going to go in. We're going to uh, kind of work on the lip line here a little bit. We're going to uh, trim up around the eyes. We're going to put the ear liners in. Uh, any holes we have in the cape here, we're going to sew them up. And uh, this is a tan cape. It's wet tan, so uh, we're going to go through here and prep it and get it ready to mount. So y'all just stick with us. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this lip skin right here and uh, we're just going to kind of, I had it turned out, but we're going to turn it out a little more all the way to the edge. That way you just get it'll tuck in better if you do that. We're just going to go around here and just trim it all the way out to the edge of the lip. Be careful, don't cut all the way through, especially with these scalpel blades. Just, if you're not careful, if you ain't got gloves on, you'll cut your finger. Any of you that's just starting out in taxidermy, this step right here, when you first cape a, a deer head out, it's a little tricky, but over time you'll get to where you're, you're a whole lot faster at it and you don't cut as many holes. Even as long as I've been doing this, I still cut holes. That's just part of it. This is a little time consuming. The more time you spend on this, getting all this trimmed out, the whole lot better your lip line is going to look. It's going to have a whole lot tighter, cleaner look because you're going to be able to tuck that, that lip right in up next to that nose and you'll get a good transition between the nose and the lip. Keep your finger in there and put pressure on this with your thumb as you cut this skin. It'll roll. It'll roll right out of here. All right. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but you got the lip right here. We've got this skin. We got it trimmed all the way out to the edge. All right, now we're going to start working on the eyes. And these are all crucial steps to making this deer come alive when you mount him up because the more of this you get done, the more detail you're going to be able to see in this eye around, when you, especially when you sculpt your clay. If you get this thinned out like you need it, if this, this, this all lay right in there like it's supposed to and you get a good lifelike looking eye. You want to bring this skin, you want to trim this skin right up to the eyelid here where the eyelashes are. You just want to be careful and don't cut all the way through it. There's some little fatty, little fat deposit glands in the eyelid. I like to strip them out because if you go ahead and take them out when you sculpt your eye with the clay, that clay will take the place of that, those little fatty sections in there and you won't have as much uh, shrinkage when it dries down whenever you're mounting. I'll try to show this to you here in a minute. I'll zoom in on it and let you see what I'm talking about when I get down to it.
pretty much get this out. I just need to trim up this nictitating membrane or this tear duct here just a little bit, but we'll do that here in a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this excess skin off. I leave just enough to tuck into the behind the clay when I mount this. So I usually leave, I don't know, about probably three sixteenths of an inch somewhere in that neighborhood. Some people use a scabbing knife to do this, but I just prefer using a scalpel blade. If you got a good sharp scalpel, you can take all this extra skin off you have any right here left over when you fleshed it. I like to always come back and trim it up right before I mount it. Like I said, it does, it will make a big difference in the the way your mount turns out if you get all this cleaned up, thinned up right in here, around, especially around this eye. You may be wondering why there's a hole in this tear duct right here, but a lot of times, to me, it's easier to have this, just go ahead and open this up and make a hole in it. That way you can kind of see where you're tucking your skin into that uh, tear duct on that form where we cut it out in the last video. <clears throat> it's a lot easier to, to tell where you're at versus trying to feel through that skin. Got that one ready. All right, I'm gonna switch over and do the other eye, and uh, I'll get back with y'all here in a minute whenever we get ready to do the nose, and then we'll start on the ears. All right, guys, we got the eyes finished up here, got them fleshed out. Now we're gonna, or well, not fleshed out, we got them turned all the way out. Like we want. Now we're gonna work on the nose. I like to take my uh, it's just a wooden hammer here, but I use it for a fleshing beam on the end. It works. It's just the right size to fit through the eye sockets and the nose. And 
with that hammer bent on that end, it kind of, the weight of it helps kind of hold it for you while you go through and do all this. So I'm going to go through and trim this up right quick. This nose, just like the lip line, the, the thinner the, you get this, the easier it is to tuck this skin up inside the foam. It dries down a lot faster and you get a lot cleaner, better look once it, once it does dry. And I'm just kind of running this scalpel along just at a little bit of an angle, just enough to catch. And I'm kind of, I'm more or less just pulling this all the way out to the end and dragging this tissue with it as it comes off. You just got to be careful because if you're just starting out, you'll cut through this really quick because it's, it's real thin. Especially right here when, on this opposite side of this cartilage here. You don't really want to cut a hole in this area because it can be fixed, but it's time consuming and it's it's hard to hard to hide it once you do cut a hole in it. All right, guys, <clears throat> we got one side of the nostril done. This right here is pretty much what you want it to look like when you get it finished up. You just I'll usually leave I don't know about a quarter inch of internal skin. On the inside of the nose, that way when you turn it over, this right here is what you'll be tucking up into the mannequin. And as you, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but that's the internal nose skin. That'll be what you what, what you took in there. So, all right. So we'll start on this other nose now. Put our little fleshing beam inside here and start fleshing it out. Once you've done a few of these, it gets it gets easier as you go. So <clears throat> if you're just starting out in a taxidermy, just take your time. Make sure you got a. Uh, to me, if you got a real sh good sharp scalpel, um, it's to me it's easier to flesh like this because even though the knife is sharper, you don't cut near as many holes through it because you can just kind of let this knife glide along with just light pressure and it'll. If you hold, if you once you learn to what angle to hold that skin, you can or this membrane and stuff, you can just peel it right off here. There's a lot of cartilage in these nose. You gotta you gotta learn how to kind of cut it out. But once you get it, once you get it trimmed off here, like I said, if you the thinner you get it, the better, the easier it's gonna make to mount. I don't know if you can see on camera this angle I'm holding on this blade, but it's tail take it right off. <clears throat> like I said before, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and I still every now and then I cut a hole just like, you know, like it ain't nothing, like I've been doing it my first time. But if you take your time, <clears throat> don't get too big of a hurry. You should be, you should do just fine. I 
mean, even taking your time on this step, like I've said, this is going to make it a whole lot easier when you start mounting it up for all this skin to lay in place where it needs to go on that in that nose and your nose pad and everything's just going to come together so much better. You want to make sure you keep this hide laying flat on whatever little flat, what type of every type of fleshing beam you use. Because if you don't, if it gets if the skin gets a roll injured, you're going to cut a hole in it. So just make sure it's laying flat. Right now I'm down to this part to where you have to cut off the top of this uh, cartilage in this the septum of this nose but you let your knife just kind of glide along it'll slide right over the top of it and it won't leave nothing but the skin under it takes a little bit of patience but it'll all like I said in the end it's all gonna turn out a whole lot better than if you don't do all this nostrils trimmed out, thinned out. Now we can move on to the, uh, just need to trim these lips up. I've already got the eyes done, so I'll just come in here and take my scalp. I, I like to leave from, uh, from the hairline here out into this papillae, which is this little textured part of the skin inside the mouth. I try to leave about a quarter of an inch to tuck up inside my phone. If you get too much more than that, it gets to the point. It's hard to manage trying to get it all in there. Any other little piece of the excess skin here, you need to trim it off. We'll do the same thing on the other side here. Just go around, check your skin, make sure you got the right amount showing. As you get right here in the corner, you can see where the hair comes together right in here. I always kind of try to come out to a point, sort of, and then go back in right where that is. That just that gives you a little extra skin to uh, work with. You know, in, when I was showing you on that form to where I leave a little extra room where I, I cut that lip slot, right here is that extra skin that I took back in there. And if you leave that little tag in on there, you can take that modeling tool and kind of pull it, stick it in there and pull it to the front and it'll tuck that skin and it'll make, it, it'll, it'll make your natural uh, lip line come together there in the corner of the mouth. It just makes it come out a lot better, in my opinion. All right, we're going to move on to the ears now. And uh, I do use ear liners. I mean, I, I've used the Mondo method, but... I, just, I mean, it takes a little more time to do this, but I just think you get a better looking, cleaner looking ear when you uh, go in here and uh, take the cartilage out and put your ear liner in. I had to go find this little knife right here. 
this thing right here makes it a whole lot easier when it goes to getting this cartilage out of these ears. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna take this ear and I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm gonna look right here on the edge, you can see where the cartilage ends right here, where the skin begins. And we'll just take this scalpel blade, we're gonna just take light pressure, we're gonna fold that ear in half and hold light pressure on here and just cut right through that cartilage. And it'll take you, it'll take you a little while to get the hang of it. Um, just don't bear down too hard because you, you, that ear skin is real thin, you cut all the way through it and then if you do, you're gonna have to repair a hole. It's not no big deal to repair, it's just a time consuming, just take more time and you could be doing something else. But if you take your time and go through this cartilage, you'll, you'll see the transition between the cartilage and the uh, inner ear skin. It'll, it'll turn a different color. It's almost like a grayish looking color. But you'll slip that in. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but let me see if I can zoom in here just a, just a little bit. You'll see where I folded this in half, you'll see the line there I cut. Just fold that ear in half and then start on the side and just cut across. And then I'll take my knife and the easiest way I found to do this is to, to hold this ear and take the tip of this knife blade right here and stick it on here and you'll pop it. You'll just hook the edge of the blade on and you'll pop it like so and it'll, it'll free that ear skin right up or that, well, the cartilage from the inner ear skin. And you just wanna go all the way across this and break it loose. Try not to, try not to nick that inner, inner ear skin with your knife because if you do, when you start separating this cartilage, it's gonna, it'll tear and then your, when you go to run your thumb in there, it just makes a mess. The more you flick it, the more it's gonna break loose. I always hold the tip, do the tip, do the end closest to the ear butt first and then spin it around and do this end. It just, it makes it a whole lot easier to do. I don't know why, it's just, it just peels off easier that way. And I just did exactly what I said for y'all not to do. I actually caught the skin and poked a hole in it right there. I don't know if you can see that, but. It can be fixed, but that's what not to do. <laughs> All right, let me grab, grab a pair of pliers. We're gonna work this cartridge off this ear skin. All right, first things first, we'll take this in here. Hold that and just work your thumb under the skin. And then right here where this hole is, we're just going to have to work around it. It's just, it happens. Like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. I still, I still can make boo-boos too. It's just part of it. You try not to because it's just extra work, but that's just the way it is. A lot of times you can pick this skin loose wherever you tear that hole and work it loose and it'll, it'll be just fine. You just take, get you a dryer sheet and a little bit of super glue and I just work it back in there. Sometimes you take your scalpel blade and kind of work with it a little bit. I have had ears with, uh, with tick damage that I've had to do this way because there'd be so many tick bites in the deer's ear that the uh, the skin wouldn't want to separate it. it would just want it just tear it like Swiss cheese from where those ticks have been all over. If you'll be careful, once you get it started, it'll just eventually get a hold of that and peel it on back. It ain't no big deal. Just take your time. The 
what I like to do is once you get it started hold your cartilage like right here take your thumb and you're going to use the tip of the pad of your thumb and just work it under here just go slow and work it all the way out to the tip of your ear You don't want to get in no big hurry here because you just got to put, just take your thumb, put light pressure on this skin, and if it if it's in good shape, it'll it'll peel right out. Sometimes you have one in the freezer for a while and uh, had some freezer burn, it can be a little more aggravating. You have to kind of, you may have to soak it. You know, a lot of times I use a, it's made by Knobloks. It's the Skin Prep NBU, I believe. I've used it before, and it seems to. If you've got freezer burn, I don't know why, what it is about the chemical makeup of it or whatever, but it seems to loosen this cartilage up on, on the deer's ear. As you can see, I, I got my thumb in here. I'm just, I'm just holding this cartilage and working it through. And once you get all the way to the edge, you can most of the time, if you be real careful, you can grab that cartilage and just pull it, and as you see, it'll, it'll come right off. Just work it all the way out to the tip. And there you go, that's, that's the first half of the end. You can actually use this as a pattern to, uh, if, when you're doing your ear liner, depending on what brand ear liner you use, you can use this to cut your ear out if, you, if you're not, you know, if you just don't wanna guess off the top of your head. But after you do it a while, you, you kinda, I trim mine, then I'll test fit them inside the skin before I epoxy them in. I use a, a two part, ear liner adhesive epoxy on all my ear liners and uh, if you if you if you trim that ear liner to where you've got just a little bit of slack inside that ear you won't have any trouble with that ear skin drumming once you put that epoxy ear liner in there you're good i mean it'll depends on what brand you get um, they got some that sets up quick and they got some that sets up slower i kind of prefer the the quick set because once I get my ear liners put in, I'm usually already, as soon as I get them put in, I, I may go wash my hands, take a little break or something, but I'm usually starting to mount the deer on the form just soon after I get the ear liners put in. So the quicker they set up, the better off I am. Because that way you don't have to worry about your ear skin slipping and moving around while you're in during the mounting process. But I just use these pliers and kind of pull, work this skin out of here. I believe this in here has got some tick damage too, the way it looks. So because it's starting to separate up inside here. That ain't no big deal. We'll just go on and fix it. They're not all going to come out perfect. As you can see that video, that car is just peeling right out of there. And once I get this out, get this cartilage took loose. As you can see, here's the ear skin. Here's the actual, the actual ear cartilage here that's left. I'll take a scalp, my scalpel, and I'll cut all the way around this ear butt. Cut this out. And you want to make sure you, it's kind of hard to see on camera here, but you want to make sure you don't cut your inner ear skin as you're going around cutting this off. But I try to just stay as close as I can to the skin just peel it out of here.
there you have it. There's the other part of the skin. Here's the part I took off from the other side. So you've got a, you can actually, like I was talking about, you can use that for your pattern to cut out your, uh, I'm trying to get this where you can see it here, cut out your ear liner. But there it is. I got, got a couple little holes there I got to fix, but uh, ain't that big of a deal. Turned out pretty nice. All right, let's switch over to this next ear. We're gonna do it the same way. Need to open this one up a little more. It didn't get opened all the way up here at the edge. go ahead and stick your finger in here at the edge of this cartilage just roll it out just you have to be careful because if it's a good fresh ear and it's got a lot of moisture in it it will put your finger will poke a hole through it I mean you right there where the cartilage meets the edge of the skin there's kind of like a little seam there all right we're gonna, we're gonna take this ear do it the same way I'm gonna fold it up I gotta finish opening it up right here, this little spot I missed. A lot of times that these deer when they fight, or these bugs, they'll they'll scar their ears up and there'll be scar tissue in here. And sometimes it can be a little tough getting through the scar tissue because if you ain't careful, if you don't apply enough pressure, you won't ever pop it out. But if you apply too much, you'll end up poking through. So you just gotta be easy, take your time with it. Listen, here's actually got a little bit of scar tissue right in here. All right. So we're going to fold her over like we did the other side. I don't know if you can see here. We got this. Here's the ear. Here's the cartilage. We're going to fold it in half. We'll take our scalpel. Find the edge of the cartilage. We're going to run us a line straight across like we did the other side. Like I said, just don't put too much pressure because if you do, you'll cut through. Alright guys. We've got the, uh, the mouth, the nose, the cartilage out of the ears. So, <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and we're going to prep these ears and get them ready to... Uh, put the ear liners in them. So what I like to do is I'll take them and uh, before I ever even try to repair any holes or anything on them I'll go ahead and dip them down. This is a uh, lacquer thinner in this jar right here. I'll go ahead and dip them down in this lacquer thinner and get them, get them soaking. And what it does, this will help the, the ear liner adhesive stick to this skin. All we do is once you once you pull it out of here, just take your paper towel and dry it off real good. It, it won't take this long at all to dry this this uh Lacquer thinner, it'll evaporate pretty quick. It makes it a whole lot easier to glue these ear liners in too once you do this. These ear liners that I'm using now, they've actually got the inner de ear detail down inside of them right here. So you have to, you have to cut this cartilage out, but one thing you want to remember, there's like a ring of cartilage where I always stop right here. You need to try to leave that ring in there because if you don't, that skin, it won't, uh, it won't lay down in that ear liner like it should. It just, it helps it hold its shape, I guess. So I always like to leave a little bit of that in there.
do this other side now. see any cartilage that you didn't get out all the way just make sure you go back and get it I missed a little bit right here on these edges once you get it started it'll peel right off it ain't, ain't nothing to it more of this you get out of here, the easier that ear line is going to fit in here too. Now let's dip this one down in the uh, lacquer thinner. Kind of give it a little bath here. And you don't have to leave it in there just a second, just as long as you get it good and wet. And I just kind of hold it up over the jug here and squeeze it out. If you get holes in like I got in this one, it's going to fill up, so you want to drain it out. So your ear just ain't full of lacquer thinner. Like I said, it'll evaporate. Just make sure when you do this, you ain't got no open flames or no kerosene heaters or propane heaters running here. This stuff is very flammable. And sometimes I get carried away and I'll squeeze that ear and it'll squirt halfway across the room. All right. So while we let these sit here and dry, now we're going to prep these ear liners. These ear liners, it's, it's, they're kind of smooth plastic, so what I do, you can use sandpaper. You can sand them, rough them up. But uh, I like to use, take this slim rougher and just go all over this kind of lightly. Just run it over this ear and it'll, it'll scratch rough this plastic up where that, uh, your ear liner adhesive, it'll stick right to it. it works really well. On the back of this ear where this what's flared out, make sure you get down in these cracks and crevices right here because that way you won't have no drumming of your ear skin down in here. Then turn it over and do the same thing on the inside. Just kind of rough it up just so that way you can make sure the glue gets down here and sticks to everything like it should. You do all run a stout rougher or your sandpaper either one over your liner you just take your hand and just kind of wipe it and if there's any excess plastic on it it'll just wipe right off but I don't know if you can tell in the video but you can see you can see that where I kind of scratched and roughed it up in there here's the one I just did and here's the one I didn't do you can definitely tell the difference in it all right let's 
once I do this too, another thing you got to remember is um, make sure that you, you go ahead and you dunk these down into the lacquer thinner. But when you put them down in here, just leave them in just for a second because if you don't, this lacquer thinner will soften this plastic up to word of the point. I mean, if you if you mess with it too much, it'll you'll distort it and it'll lose its shape. So usually what I do is I just dunk it down in there and just lay it on the table. Just lay it out there and just don't touch it, just leave it alone. And once that dries, it'll, it'll, get, it'll get hard and firm again. But we'll come in here and do the other side. I'll try to get up here where you can see what I'm doing. But I'm just, I'm just running this rougher inside this ear. And this thing has got some really sharp, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's got some real sharp little teeth in it. And it'll, I think it'll eat that plastic up. But it just takes just, I mean, just a few minutes to do this. And then, like I said, if you don't do this, that skin is going to drum in here and it's going to be a pain because when you go to, once, it, once that skin dries down on the phone and everything's ready to go, you're going to, it's, it's just not going to look accurate. It's not going to, it's going to be, the ear's going to look thick. All right, we're going to give this one a bath and some lacquer thinner. Get it up on it here. Lay it down here and let it dry. Put the lid on that so I don't knock it over. All right, now we're gonna move on to the ear hole repair. And all you're gonna need is a simple dryer sheet and some super glue and a little tool to, to lock it down with here. So we're gonna, I'll start on this, the worst one first. Let me zoom this camera in here where y'all can see. Alright. Just lack of thinner off the table here. Alright, we got some holes here. I don't know if you can see them right there. Yeah, I can see them, so surely you can see them. Um, let's see, let me move this around just a little bit. Like, so there we go, that's a lot easier. All right, now, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna lay this ear out, kind of flatten it out here on the table. And if we didn't lose no skin, which I didn't, all I did was kind of tore a little hole in it. Like I said, I think all this is from some tick damage it got in here. But we're just going to take our time. We're going to do one, one hole at a time. You want to try to line your seams up here. Sometimes a little modeling tool like this, it helps because the skin will kind of stick to your fingers when you touch it. I guess it has to do with more I put that lacquer thinner on it. But we're going to spread this skin out and get, a, get it roughly in a ballpark there. Now we're going to take our dryer sheet and we're going to kind of measure it just by, and I'm going to cut a piece out that's going to cover that hole and just go just to the outside edges of that hole. And I try to try not to have no sharp square corners on your little dryer sheet pieces. So what I'll do, I'll take the scissors and just kind of round them off. And the reason we do that is because when you slide that ear liner down, you don't want nothing really catching on it. I don't know if that makes a difference, but that's just the way I've always done it. It seems to work. All right, so we got our little patch there, and that looks the real, looks good, so we're gonna take us some super glue here. We're gonna go all the way around this hole in this ear. And you don't need, you ain't gonna take a whole lot, but try not to get the glue, try to keep the glue on the outside of the edge and not get it inside the hole there because if you do it's going to stick your hair together on your skin we don't want that all right so we're going to put the glue on there and we're going to layer a little patch on here try not to get it on our fingers all right and we're going to take a modeling tool and just kind of 
kind of lay it down there until that glue starts tacking up and sticking to that. And most time, that super glue, depending on what you use, it works pretty quick. A lot of times I try to kind of lift up on this this air skin here because if you don't, if that glue does leak in, I just don't want it getting on the, the hair on the inside because it'll, you'll actually glue your two halves together if you're not careful and we don't want that. pretty nice here. I always try to just work this glue all the way out to the edge of this patch. That way, if you, Once you do that, there ain't no chance of it catching your ear liner when it goes in. Most of the time it'll just slip right past it. But a lot of times I'll just keep rubbing it until that glue starts completely setting up. Alright, we got that one done. I don't know if you can see here in the video, but it's right there at the end of that modeling tool. It's closed up and ready to go. We got two more here. We got just two. This here's a little small one. And the other one, it's more or less just a, it's like a slit. It ain't really even a hole. I don't even know how I did that, but, but I did it. But it ain't no big deal. We're going to fix it. All right, we're going to cut us another patch here. This is going to be a long, skinny one. too long so let me trim it off here you kind of want to you want it to fit you don't want too much in there because like i said it it can get in the way of your putting your ear liner in but i think we're going to be all right get our corners all trimmed up here i'm going to go ahead and apply our glue down both sides of this one And then we'll take our little modeling tool, lay it in there, and we'll start working it down. Like I said, just make sure you lift up on that from time to time. Make sure that don't stick your ear hair together down inside your ear there. Once we get that laid in like so, we'll just let her sit up and dry. That other one's already, it's already completely dry, tacked up, so. I'm gonna let this sit here and dry just for a second because this next one, well, I don't know, I might can get it. A lot of times, sometimes you get them close together, if you start pulling on one, if that other one ain't dry, it'll mess it up, but I think we're gonna be good. I believe I can go ahead and fix this one too while I'm here. Yeah. I believe it'll work. I won't cut me. Well, I ain't got cutting the patch. I can use this piece here, I think. Oh, yeah. So we're good. We're going to be able to put this one in. Take our super glue and just go around our hole. Just like we did the other two. Get her in there like so. All right. And we're gonna lay her patch on like so. And glue her down. There again, make sure you don't Got super glue on the inside because it'll glue your hair together.
All right, I'm gonna let that lay there and let that tack up for a minute. While we do that, I'm gonna move on to the next deer. I'm gonna try to slide this over without messing it up. And I've got one little spot on this ear here. Oh, you can see it right there at the end of my finger. It's kind of going to be a tricky one because for some reason it tore down inside the, the ear cartilage down there, but we'll fix it. No big deal. Really, down like down in an area like this, the only reason you want to repair these holes is when you mix up that uh, ear adhesive and slide that uh, ear liner down in there. Well, if you got a hole like that, 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 that glue's going to go everywhere. So the, that's the main reason for doing it is just like down in here, because you're not ever going to see that down inside that ear. But it's mainly just to keep that glue from squirting out everywhere. But like I said, it's just a quick fix. Ain't nothing to it. Just gonna trim up our little patch here. Lay it down here and test fit it. Like so, and as usual, I got it too long, so I'm gonna cut a little bit of it off. Because the less, the better. All right, let's layer back down in here again. Oh yeah, that fits fits real good there. All right, I don't know if you can see, you can see in the video. Right, I'm gonna run some more super glue around the edges. this right up in there like so try not to glue my fingers together take that modeling tool now I'm holding my finger on the inside of this try to keep this from going together so we'll see how well it's gonna work out here I think it's gonna be all right as long as I don't glue my finger to the inside of this ear I'll be all right this is kind of a hard place to glue because it's just won't lay flat on the table because of this cartilage so I'm having to kind of put my finger under it as a backing to hold it in place while, I, while this glue sets up and I think I just got glue on my finger but we'll see here in a minute big deal you get it on there just make sure you wipe it off real quick and don't stick you stick your fingers together but even though we've had a few little boo-boos here on this ear it's turned out nice I have had some bad ones I have had some that had a hole as big as that glue bottle that I've had to repair I'd almost been, all, been better off to have a donor ear, just cut the ear off and put a whole new ear on it. Had a franken deer. All right, this side over here set up. As you can see, that after there, we're good to go on that. All the all the glues set up. Ain't nothing, nothing stuck together. So just as soon as this side sets up, we're gonna go ahead and uh, test fit our ear liners. Uh, make sure that they all fit like they're supposed to. We've got plenty of slack in the skin. And then once we do that, we'll uh, we'll put the, uh, the glue deer liners in. So we're going to let that dry out and I'll get back with y'all here in just a few minutes. Alright, we got our ear liners dry in there. Or, well, our ear repair is dry. And while it's drying, we're going to go ahead and uh, i got a hole here in the lip skin. I'm gonna sew it up right quick. What I like to use, I just use this regular old four pound test strand fishing line. And once you, uh, once you get this sewn in there with that, you'll never notice holes ever here in, on this lip. This is actually gonna probably end up tucking up inside the, inside the form. 
you, you won't ever see it no way but still I want to fix it because if you don't your hide paste is going to squirt out everywhere just like it does like we were talking about with those with the ear liners if you don't uh, seal this hole up it, it'll leak out so what we're going to do we're just going to take this skin pinch it up get it started in here I like to pull it up and tie it off tie me a couple of overhand knots in it right here and it, it ain't gonna come out because like I said once that hide paste gets here and glues all this together it'll lock it down and it ain't gonna go nowhere you can also take and put a drop of super glue on it that'll hold I may do that a lot of times I do that and lock the knots down when I'm sewing Just do that like so, and then we'll take our super glue. It ain't gonna take much, just put just a just a dab on that knot, and it'll it'll seal it right up. And just cut off the excess. I usually leave a little bit of tag on there because sometimes when you pull a fishing line, it'll slip a little bit. So if you cut it all the way to the knot, sometimes it could slip through. Make sure you get your whiskers out of the way. Make sure they ain't sticking through through here where you're gonna be sewing. Just take your time. And on a place like this, you want to make sure that you that you put your stitches fairly close together. So you have a good tight seam. But you gotta also be careful and don't poke a hole in your finger. These little old needles are sharp. They, this is actually what I'm using a cutting needle and it will actually cut you. So you get going it'll usually take off come together pretty easy getting started is the hard part especially when you got these dang whiskers keep getting in your way you know you don't want to sew a whisker up in there because you'll be able to see it and won't look right one thing too I always want to try to sew in the direction of the hair like on this deer his nose is facing this way towards the Towards you, towards the camera, so that hair is actually laying back this way. So I want my, I'm using a whip stitch, so I want my stitch to actually help pull the hair down, which it will. If you was to sew the other way, when as you're pulling your stitches through and tightening them up, you're gonna have issues with them. They'll be, uh, they'll be pulling that. They'll make they'll make the hair to actually stand up. Just want to make sure when you get done, take your hand and kind of back brush this and get all the get all the hair out of the seam. kind of getting down to a little cowlick here so you 
you gotta gotta tuck the hair down in there before you pull your stitches so that it ain't sticking out. Because if you get it like on one of these little cowlick seams here and you got hair sticking through, I usually just take my needle, kind of pull the seam together. I take my needle and push that hair down through the seam. And it'll it works really good about tucking it down in there. Once I get this last stitch done in, I'll take my needle out and take my, I know you can't see it on this camera because it's four pound test clear, it's hard to see. But I'm going to tie this off just like I did at the front and that'll lock that seam in. And then you can turn around and um, put you a drop of super glue on it. Lock it in, like so. Try to keep the tip of this glue cleared off so it don't stop up on me. And then just take your scissors, come in here, and I, I like leaving a tag in. Like I said, sometimes that way, when that as that high dries, it won't. Uh, it won't unravel the knot. And I don't know if you can see in there, but there was a pretty good sized hole there. It's gone now, so I'm gonna flip it over. Any whiskers or anything that's inside the seam, I'm gonna pull it out now. I'm gonna take my hand and do it, kind of pull the hair out. And I'll also take a brush. this hair and if there's any hair down in that seam where I just sewed that together it'll pull that hair out and make it stand back up and that way you'll never you'll never know there's a seam there I don't know if you can tell in the video there but that, that cut was right at that lip line right there <clears throat> all right so We'll go ahead and got a couple of holes here in the body I need to sew up, bullet holes, whatever, knife holes. I don't really know where these come from. But I think that may be a bullet hole there. We'll pull them back together and sew them up. I got one right there I'm gonna have to sew up. What I like to use on the body is this is this is uh, silicone coated braided taxidermy thread. I think it's actually made by Van Dyke's. I was cutting me off a little piece here. It's just pretty stout. These scissors I don't like cutting it. Usually, I have to, most times I have a scalpel to cut it. It's some tough stuff. Almost. It looks like what you, that fire, the fire line, fishing line. That's what it looks like, except it's. It's silicone coated, so it'll slide through this this leather a lot easier. I'm gonna do the same thing on this hole here. 
I may not be able to see from camera angle, but I'm going to start my needle in. I'll pull it through and then I'll tie it off just like I did and then I'll start so doing start doing a whip stitch on it and stitch it up. Just tie a couple overhand knots in it here. Most time I don't even bother even gluing these seam, uh, the knots on these places like this because you're going to have hide paste on here and that hide paste is going to stick it and glue it down so if you leave a tag end on it, it it's going to get embedded into that hide paste and stick itself to the form so you should be fine. You just don't want to leave too much sticking out because it will be in the way about, <clears throat> about your stitches. Alright, we got that tied off so now we're just going to start stitching this hole up. Alright guys, we got their needle and thread here through this other hole. I done tied that other one off. Now I'm going to go through and put a couple of whip stitches in this one and we'll be done here in just a few minutes. This is kind of down in the, close to the brisket area on here so you want to make these things pretty tight because it's uh, there's a lot of white hair down in there. It's going to show up or a little lighter colored hair. Well, and some white. But these, these seams, if you if you don't get them tight enough down in them areas, they will show up a little more than they will if you've got it up on the shoulder or on the neck. So just keep your, keep your stitches tight, close together. And then I usually do two or three. Uh, stitches and then I'll pull it tight. That just way it, way it keeps everything in line. Just make sure you keep your hairs tucked in there inside the seam. That's got that. <clears throat> now we're ready to put our ear liners in and we'll get ready to mount the deer. Alright, guys. We've got all the holes sewed up, we've got the face and everything prepped. Now we're going to uh, invert the hide to the hair side out and get ready to start putting the ear liners in. A lot of times I'll take some paper towels. These ears, a lot of times, are going to have that lacquer thinner on, so I'll take paper towels and kind of dry the hair out on them. It just helps them to dry down faster. These ears are actually some pretty good looking ears. They ain't got a whole lot. They had some tick damage, but not, not as bad as I thought. I'm looking at the other side of them.
And this ear here is the ear that I had uh, three holes in, and you can look from this side of it, you can't even tell it ever had a hole in it. And I can actually show you one of them. One of them is right here, but you can't even tell there was even a hole there. So that turned out really nice. All right. this out just a little bit. Alright, so we're going to take these ear liners and we're going to test fit them in here. So, take them, slide them right on down in here. They're going to be, when you're test fitting them, you ain't got no glue on them. They're kind of, especially after you rasp, rasp them down kind of stiff, hard to get in, but once you just take your time, get them started, they'll go right in there. Right like so. And I don't think I'm going to have to do any trimming at all on this one. I think we're actually going to be pretty good. Yeah, what you want is down inside this ear, in this area right here, you want to make sure you've got some slack, which I do because I don't have all, the, all of it down in here yet. But once you pull it in, roll that skin in, if you got slack there, you're good. And which we do, we, we're not tight at all. So that side there is ready to go. We can go ahead and uh, can get ready to, to glue it in there. We're going to take the other side and do it the same way. We'll slide her down in here. Do a test fit on it, make sure it everything matches up, lines up, make sure we got plenty of slack. These these ear liners actually fit really good in these deer. I like them. But you tuck your cartilage down inside the ear. Roll it in, that nair's gonna fit good too. So we're good to glue these up. Let me uh, take a break here. I'm gonna go gather up our glue and our uh, popsicle sticks and our, uh, everything I need to glue these up. I'll be right back with y'all. <coughs> All right guys, we got our ear liners ready to go. So we're going to take and go ahead and get ready to start gluing them up here. And I, I use the uh, the two part cartilage liner, ear liner adhesive. This here is actually, this is made by McKenzie. And it's, uh, it's flesh colored. So you don't have to do as much paint work inside the ears when you do your finish work with this. As you can see, it's kind of a pink color. We're just going to mix equal parts here. Just mix one and one. So. That ought to be about enough right there. part resin to one part hardener with this stuff. Stuff's kind of cool the way it looks. It's like honey. But 
<clears throat> just make sure you get it mixed up real good. And once this stuff sets up, that skin ain't going nowhere inside those ears. Like I said, when I first started doing taxidermy, I, I did a couple of Bondo ear, the Bondo ear method, but then I learned how to do it this way. And I can get a more realistic ear with a liner than I can do in the Bondo. I, I just couldn't ever get the Bondo thin enough so it would have strength even though I used the resin and the fiberglass chop in it. It's still, you just, I mean, you can't beat these ear liners as far as the anatomically correct design of these things. All right, so we're gonna take this resin we're gonna spread us you want to stay kind of towards the end the tip of your ear liner when you put this on because as you slide this hide down it's going to spread it all down in here anyway so what i'll usually do is i'll put a bunch right on the end right like so stuff's kind of like spreading peanut butter it's thick and then i'll work it down i'll thin it down as i go towards the ear butt but you don't want to get uh, too much in here because as you slide it down, it's going to squirt out down here at the end and come out on the inside of your ear, and you don't want that because it'll get all in your hair. And this, this stuff, it's water, water soluble, but it's still, it's a pain to get out of the hair if you get it squirted down in there. And once you get the get this down inside there, you can take your hands and kind of you can work this glue around inside of that skin and get it down in there everywhere you need it. All right. Now all we gotta do is slide it down in here. And as you can see, it goes in much easier once that glue is applied to it versus putting it in with it dry. And you just want to take your hands and just kind of work your way around the ear and line all your hair patterns up. And once you get them lined up, I like to take and grab it back here at the back of the ear and pull the skin. And work all your hair out. Once you get your hair patterns lined up, just take your hands and start out here at the end. And I like to just work, kind of squeeze like so and work my way down. What it'll do, it'll actually, 
it'll force that glue from the tip and work all the air pockets out of your ear. Because you don't really want you don't want no air in here. Because it'll make it look it'll it'll have the effect of that it was drumming when in reality it'll just be a big thick glob of glue down in here. But you wanna you wanna try to work as much of this glue down and into the ears you can and work as much air out as you can because you want nice crisp edge on these ears when you get done with them. And I like to work work my skin to the center and then as it dries it'll kind of pull itself out and level itself up. You just might want to keep an eye on it for a day or two just to make sure everything's drying like it's supposed to. That's a good looking ear there now. Trying to get it where y'all can see it. <laughs> Just come back, make sure you get all your hair patterns lined up. That's the main thing, the biggest thing is getting all of them set. That's it. We got that one done. Now let's go on the next one. Alright, now we're going to put 
this next one in here. I'm gonna do it the same way. Take our glue, put it up here at the tip of the ear. I think I mixed up a little more on this than I did the other one. Spread it around. Like so. All right, we got that one slid down in there. We got a little glue on me. Let me get this glue off. Like I said, this stuff's water soluble, so it'll it'll wash right out. It ain't no big deal. You just don't really want to get it in the hair because it's kind of aggravating. Get it out of the hair. <coughs> all right. So all we got to do now, line everything up here. Kind of feel like I'm working backwards because I'm having trying to get this for the camera turn it around this way a little bit where y'all can see we're going to line all our hair patterns up get all that straight as you can see like in this area right right in here you can tell when that when that hair pattern lines up you'll know it'll make a crisp dark brown line right down the edge of that ear. I don't know if y'all seen that when I did that. But same goes for the top. When you get this hair pattern lined up, you'll have a crisp dark brown to black line on, on most white tail that'll kind of accent the edge of this ear. <clears throat> but once you, most time, once you get this right here, to start lining up your ear will it'll just almost fall in place on its own and then come in here and i like to grab this ear butt on the inside and grab the back of the back side of the ear and just pull this skin and it's going to flare that out a little bit that's fine <clears throat> you just have to go back in there and work it back in but <clears throat> at the same time it's going to help get the rest of that ear lined up all you do is just take your fingers and just roll that that dark line back into place. So I can go to the bottom, roll it back in. And then once you do that, you can come in here now and start setting everything in the ear. Like all your internal down inside the cartilage. Start getting that set inside of there. Because there ain't no sense in setting in any of the inside internal parts of the deer until you get all this lined up. Because if you do, you're just going to be fighting against yourself trying to line it all up down in here.
Just keep working that glue around in there until you get it, get all the bubbles and all the bumps worked out of it. Like I said, you want to try to always leave the extra skin right in the center of the ear right here. That way as it dries, it won't be pulling against itself. I just try to work, work it down with my thumb. Come down these edges, keep it, you want these edges nice and crisp, point to them on the outside edge. Same goes for the top, work it down. And don't forget about the back. You have a, this ear, this ear liner flays out in the back. So, and it's also got the little cartilage bumps in it. You wanna, uh, like the little divots and grooves. You wanna make sure that you come in here and uh, work that skin back work all the air out of the back of this ear. And once you do that, come back around to the front. Once you think you got all the bubbles out, and just kind of roll that black line back in. Like so. Try to move you. Try to taxi your skin up to the inside of the ear. Like so. You can spend as much time as you want. You got, I mean, you got plenty of time with that epoxy before it sets up to work this deer in, like it's supposed, you know, any way it needs to be. You can sit here and work it forever, but sometimes you're better off once you get it set, just to leave it alone, let it, let it set up. Sometimes your OCD kicks in. You'll sit here for 30 minutes working one ear. All right, I don't know if you can see this in the video or not. We got both the ears done. We got the hair patterns, got, need to get them lined up. They look pretty good. Now as this starts drying down, you can kind of work with it a little more. But uh, that's going to be it now for the uh, finishing up the hide. Um, once these ear liners set up and dry, their next step is going to be to mount it. So, uh, Y'all uh, y'all come back and uh, on our next video, we're going to be uh, actually mounting this deer, uh, probably start to finish. So uh, thanks for watching and God bless.